Hey Cleveland, this is Anderson Vergeon of the Cleveland Cavaliers. You are listening to the Sports Fix. You are the voice of the Sports Fix. So pick up your phone now and call 216-539-7535. 216-539-7535. Business owners and professionals, do you want to take your business, your product, your team, your event to the next level? You want to advertise right here with the Sports Fix. Our listeners are among the most loyal listeners, terrestrial or internet. The Sports Fix universe is not only the radio show, but tens of thousands of fans on Facebook and Twitter. Email me, Jerry Myers, the Sports Fix at AOL.com. That's the Sports Fix at AOL.com. And let me help you swing for the fences and hit it out of the park right here on the Sports Fix. Portions of the Sports Fix brought to you by Harry Buffalo. Harry Buffalo, join the herd. Live in Ohio, it's time to get your fix. The Sports Fix. Off and running. Here we go. Welcome in, everybody, to the Sports Fix Thursday. Man, already the end of another week coming up here as we kick it downhill. Still a whole lot to get into. And uh, I'll tell you, sometimes sometimes you wake up in the morning and, and you know, the, the sun is shining on you, even though it's chilly outside. And you go, hey, that's proof that somebody out there is listening in the universe. I'll tell you what I mean in a minute. But uh, we've got a quick opening segment coming here. Doug Plagans from the Lake Erie Monsters will be with us relatively quickly here today. Mike Brandenberry, we've got some trivia, a whole lot to do. Let's get doing it, baby. Let's get to doing it. Welcome in, you guys, to the Sports Fix here live. I am your host, the Big Daddy on the microphone, J-Rock, Jerry Myers, whatever you want to call me. Call me happy, excited, glad to have you here with us each and every weekday at noon, Monday through Friday, across the Sports Fix Radio Network. Maybe that means you're listening live on TuneIn, TuneIn's radio app, worldwide mobile apps, Spreaker, Mixler, their respective websites and digital and mobile apps, or maybe you're on our website, thesportsfix.net. If you're not, make sure you bookmark that, by the way, because as you've seen, there were a couple of times this week that we had glitches. Everything went on the air, but there were moments where it appeared there may be trouble if that ever happens. Uh, I know the other day SoundCloud had some trouble uploading on Tuesday, so it was nearly 24 hours before Tuesday's episode ended up on SoundCloud. So, I mean, things like that happen. If you don't want to wait, if you want to get your fix right away, you, the website is the place to go because it's got all of the links to all the different places that you can get it, alternate sites, plus it streams right off the website directly without pushing any buttons every day at noon right there on thesportsfix.net. So make sure you bookmark that, you guys, as well. Welcome. Shout out to everybody that listens, thousands of you guys around the world 24-7 who listen on sites on digital delay, such as iHeartRadio, the world's largest internet radio provider, on iTunes, downloading us there, on Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud, and CarPlay, all the different features and podcast places that you download and feed the show. However you do it, subscribe to it, get it. You get that fixed. Thank you guys, seriously, for doing it each and every day. Maybe you're here for the first time today. Maybe you're here each and every day. You guys are what keeps this thing going, the engine that keeps the sports fix moving, you guys. I can't say that enough, and I mean it. So do that. Be a part of the show. As you heard when we came on the air, phones are open right now for a few minutes, although very quick opening segment. 216-539-7535. 216-539-7535. You can't get through or we're not taking calls or one of those things. Hey, don't forget, 24-7, you can leave your message. Leave it on the take line and we'll replay it on the show as soon as we can. If you don't want to do that or if you can't do that, I know a lot of you guys listen at work and in places where you can't use your phone or you're listening on your phone, which, of course, makes it difficult to then use your phone and call us. Hit us up on social media anytime. 
Facebook and Twitter. Facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix C L E. Email us the sports fix at AOL.com. Facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix C L E. Email us the sports fix at AOL.com. All right, I'm going to try. I'll try to squeeze in a phone call here in just a moment. A couple of things I wanted to mention. When I said I woke up and said, hey, sometimes you go, hey, that's proof that somebody's out there listening to me. I don't care. I'm going to say it. Josh McCown appears to have thought he may prefer to play football for the Buffalo Bills. And I say, please, yes, more power to you, my friend. Uh, go in that go in that direction. Let's see. From here, that would be go east, young man, and a little north-ish. Go east, young man. Please head towards the upstate New York area. Uh, yes, do the Browns a big favor. But not only that, last night kind of needed, I don't want to say a miracle, but definitely needed an upset to happen if you're a basketball fan for the Vikings game tomorrow to mean something against Valpo. And guess what? It means something because Detroit much like they did against the Vikes earlier just not that long ago the Detroit Titans 14 and 16 coming into the game sub 500 in the conference Valpo went in 25 and 5 on the season 12 and 2 in the Horizon League with a win they would have clinched the Horizon League title they play the Vikings tomorrow here in Cleveland Detroit Took care of business. Valpo came in on a seven-game winning streak. And Detroit Steve, Jawan Howard Jr. made the free throws at the end. Three free to play. And Detroit pulled the upset, which means tomorrow when Valpo comes to CSU at the Wolstein Center, it will be 12-3 and three in the Horizon League Valpo, 11-4 and four in the Horizon League CSU Vikings. If the Vikings win because of the tiebreaker, they will win the regular season Horizon League title, which of course sets you up in the catbird seat for the Horizon League tournament, the double bye, all of those things that come down to that, and the bragging rights. There's tons of things that come along with it. So that's a big, big deal tomorrow. We'll talk about it more. But you needed the ball to bounce your way last night for that to even happen. And it did. Detroit knocking off Valpo, setting up a big title clash tomorrow at the Wolstein Center. Speaking of big basketball, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But the eyes of the basketball world are on Cleveland tonight. You've got Golden State, the best in the West, and you got the Cavaliers, the new look Cavaliers. The first time this group of Cavs have played both teams relatively healthy. Should be fun. We'll preview that later. But I've got a few minutes before Doug Plagans joins us from the Lake Erie Monsters. So I'm going to let you join us first. Caller, you're up on the sports fix. Kick us off. Jerrock, how are you, my good friend? Hey, how you doing? This is the mayor. What's up, brother? Can you imagine going into this up upcoming season? season with Josh McGowan, Johnny <laughs> Manziel, Connor Shaw, and some guy that they drafted as this is the this is what we have to look forward to. Brother, I'm thank with you, man. God, I, I, thank God that they didn't sign Josh McGowan. I think it was it may have been his choice not to come here instead instead of the other way around. But man, I'm with you. That is I was talking about it yesterday. That was that's scary. That combo I, right there, I shouldn't, watch out. I shouldn't even use this term when I to talk about the Browns, but what is their brain trust thinking, you know, going into the season? I, I know that he's a friend of, you know, the, uh, the, the new offensive coordinator who's never called to play in the NFL, by the way. And right. you know what? He was the second lowest rated quarterback other than Blake Gelbert last year. And, and, he, and why the Browns? Wanted him to come here is beyond me. But you know what? <clears throat> that whole hype and the fiasco with the new improved darker orange helmet? Come on. What a, <laughs> what, hey, what a you know freaking what? joke. I'm with you, man, but it's not worth it. You know, it's not even worth really a lot of time to talk about it there. I mean, we dodged a bullet with McCown, and uh, I don't really, you know, again, have much to say about the uniform thing right now. So uh, it is what it is, man, and we'll see what happens with that. I I'm with you. I'm with you, but again, I'm not making those decisions. I'll tell you what, though. 
Uh, I go back to the name that keeps coming out. Anybody that wants to tell me how much the Browns need to hurry up and part ways with Brian Hoyer, I just answer with, okay, cool. Tell me where we go next. Because as you just said, one way or another, my friend, that's going to be a a poor group of guys coming into camp. And I'll go back to what I keep saying. Brian Hoyer's the best of a mediocre bunch. And that's the best you can hope to do unless – you say we're going to the top, which I'm not advocating. But unless you say no, no, no. we're going to go to the top <laughs> and we're going to draft a quarterback. Now, if you do that, then obviously you're going to go with that guy. If you were to go get Winston, then that's going to be your guy. And, we, you know, we would have to see what happens. But I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying that's your options. It's that or this is the best. That's Brian Hoyer. But then again, like Dan Wismar keeps saying, you have to want to come back. And I think the more Brian Hoyer looks back, he goes, you know what? I got to live my dream. It was fun for about six, seven months. Go see what I can do somewhere else, and I'm, I'm interested to see how that goes. But you know what? That's enough time on that, man. Let's we're not talking. You want to talk about uniforms? Talk about the Indians' uniforms. Let's talk about the monsters. Doug Plagan's joining us here in a few. Vikings are going for a regular season title. Hey, the Cavs are on national TV tonight. Should be one of the best I basketball never thought, games of the I season. I never thought that I'd be seeing this, but you know what? NBA Executive of the Year. I, I never thought I'd be saying this. Props upon props. I got to tell Stumpert, you. Stumpert, Mozgov, Smith, Perkins. These are additions that have made this team a, from a pretender to a contender overnight. Talk about Griffin. That's not Homer stuff. I, I would ask anybody to show me another executive that could even be in that conversation. Of course, without LeBron James. But at the same time, uh, he very he was very expertly... He very expertly utilized the assets that he had and maximized them and look at the difference in the reshape of this team because that's those are his moves. You can say he made move, you know, other guys got the assets, but he went and found the players that he thought fit right and look at he definitely has got the right group of players together now. Right. right. He he went out and got a starting center and a shooting guard. Boom boom without really giving up anything of any value. Waiters, eh, what have you, but you know what? He's not right. really he's not really done well in Oklahoma City. But you even, know, if, the, even if you like night, bad night. even if you like waiters, like I said the other day, even if you like Dion, which I do, you gave up one rotation player, a good young piece, for four. You know what I mean? Right. When you look at, at right. the end of the day, if you want to include Perkins in there, at least for three guys, and that's a big and, and, difference. And I'm telling you, Perkins Perkins is going to be the enforcer. If you mess with any of the big three, yes. Perkins is going to be looking at you like, yes. oh, really? He's going to really? look at Coach and go, Coach, I know what to do. Put me in. I got this. I got exactly. this. And, you know? Exactly. And when I mean, teams see that. This is, yeah. I, I, would, I would hope they could keep the nucleus of this team together for years because, you know what, Kevin Love eventually, as we saw, as we saw the other night, hitting eight threes, although – I really wish he wouldn't fall in love with just hitting threes. But, you know, I mean, he's he's a double-double guy every night. And and the thing is, is it's, to me, I look at that as a dual threat because, you know, he can stick on the outside in the games where you need him to stay out of the paint. But he does have the ability to come down low at times, too. You know, I wish he would do more of it like you. Because, like I said, the whole team falls in love with the three-pointer just a little bit too much for me. But on the nights where they're hitting them, you go, well, how can you argue with this? You know, But sometimes that lets those other teams get back in the game because when you're not hitting them, they come down, they, they shoot a couple of quick threes, and quickly a double-digit lead is back to a close game. And those are the things you got to avoid in the playoffs, you know, but... But still, that's nitpicking at this point. They're looking for 18 out of 20 tonight. And tonight is a good, this is a measuring stick right here, guys. This is a game where you go, okay, we've got all of our guys. Our pieces are in place, and so, so are they. Matter of fact, Curry's a little bit banged up still with the ankle, but he's definitely going to play. Um, it's a good test. Let's see how we match up at home two-thirds of the way through the season against the best team in basketball. You're, you're looking at between... Them playing Golden State and then Houston. These, oh yeah, this is truly this is truly the Liptus test here. Well, I the mean, West is coming. How well, how well are we going to do against the best of the West? Yeah, look ahead the next couple weeks. The West is coming. They've got all the best of them. My man, I've, I'm up against it. I appreciate okay, the call. 
Thank you very much, my man, the mayor. Good start. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Doug Plagans, voice of the Lake Erie Monsters, joins us next here on the Sports Fix. <laughs> public service announcement from the sports fix we here at the sports fix and our affiliates would like to apologize for any disturbing verbal actions but remember it's better having them trapped in a box than loose on the streets public service announcement from the sports fix the sports fix the sports show that cares Hey, guys, before we go to the break, I want to talk to you a little bit again about our good friends at Harry Buffalo North Olmsted, the UFC, the ultimate fighting championships, some of the hottest fights in the world today, each and every one of their huge events. Harry Buffalo is one of the few places in Northeast Ohio you can go there and watch each and every UFC fight at the Harry Buffalo. And let me tell you, I've been there. The people are out the door. They are to the rafters. It is one of the craziest environments for some UFC fights. Wing Mondays, they've got great deals on wings and drinks. And every day of the week, there's a different special, a different deal. And don't forget the Bison Burger, the unbelievable. It is the combination of a fantastic burger and eating healthy combined into one unbelievable sandwich you have got to get a bison burger while you're there so whatever you're looking for whatever day of the week monday through friday saturday sundays there's something for you at the harry buffalo north olmstead just outside great northern mall check them out today harry buffalo join the herd Hey, Sports Fix fans, I'm Fred McLeod, TV voice of the Cavaliers. When I'm not busy taking elbows from my buddy Austin Carr, I'm tuning in to see what the guys are saying. Come on, Cavs! I'm Little Teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. No, that like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pull me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Fantasy sports lovers, you put so much time, hard work, and effort into playing week to week that it quickly stops being a fantasy and, and starts, starts getting, getting real. real. And when the smoke clears, you want to show off those victories with a real prize. I mean, a really real prize. Nobody, Nobody does, does that, that like, like Fantasy, fantasy Jocks. Jocks. The crew over at Fantasy Jocks have beautiful, high-quality, and heavy-duty championship belts, rings, trophies, and so much more for all your fantasy sports needs. There's literally only one place to go. FantasyJocks.com Have you gotten your copy of Cleveland's Finest yet? Highlighting the best moments, players, and media members in Cleveland sports history? He won it! Milo hit a three-pointer on the side! In-depth, personal interviews with some of the top names in Cleveland sports fill the pages of this incredible book. Cleveland's Finest by Vince McKee is this year's must-have book for every Cleveland sports fan. Available now at Amazon.com. Get your copy today. You're listening to the Sports Fix. Feel like a monster. The secret side of me, I never. Welcome back to the Sports Fix Live here across the Sports Fix Radio Network. J-Rock back with you, getting ready to be joined by my man Doug Plagans. He's the voice of the Lake Erie Monsters and Monsters Hockey Action. Getting into the home stretch of the season here and up and down last week for the Monsters. Culminating yesterday with the uh, the yearly 10.45 in the morning uh, school day game there. We'll talk about all of that with Doug Plagans, voice of the Monsters. You guys can keep talking with us on social media, Facebook and Twitter. Facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix CLE. Email us the sports fix at AOL.com. Facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix CLE. I'm going to the phone. Monsters fans, you know this man. He's with us every week here on the sports fix. Doug Plagans, voice of the Lake Erie Monsters. Doug, how you doing this morning? Doing great. How are you? 
Hey, I'm all right. Yesterday morning, I got on the air and I said, hey, what'd you do this morning? Make a cup of coffee, you know? Maybe you went to work and got going, but they monsters woke up and played some hockey. I always find that uh, that's so unique to me, that one time of the year where they do the school day game yesterday morning and uh, and do that there. That's got to be so awkward, though, on you and everybody to get in there and get going so early in the morning. Well, you know, it's uh, it's something you're used to. There are a lot of teams that do it. Then uh, the officers, of course, right. uh, Tuesday had the had the school day game, the annual one at the queue it was a 10:45 a.m. start, and and it ended up being one the officers are going to want to put behind them. Just didn't yeah. uh, didn't go well with the five one loss to Rochester. But you know, at the same time, it, it changes everybody's game day routine a little bit, especially the players, coaches. But um, also, you know, the guys practice every day at uh, at that time and. And across all the professional hockey teams tend to practice in the morning around that that hour. So, you know, the guys are used to being up and moving around that time. Obviously, the intensity of a game is different from being, uh, you know, up for a practice. So so there is that component to it. But, uh, but you know, it is something that, uh, you know, you have to have to be used to. And uh, it's not an excuse for uh, for a loss because, you know, Rochester had to had to get up and play at uh, 10:45 a.m. too. So one that uh, one that the monsters just uh, you know they want to forget that one. They fell five one. They had good pressure, 38 shots on net, but uh, were only able to get the one late in the first period. And Rochester pulled away. So now you go into uh, the next game of the homestand. The uh, eight game homestand continues starting tomorrow night when uh, Iowa comes in for the first of back to back games. And 24 games left for the monsters who go into the weekend five points out of the eighth and final playoff spot. Let me just ask you, and you, you, this is a totally cold question, so I'm throwing Doug under the bus here, but you're you're pretty good at the history of things in the league. Uh, do you know where that concept, did that concept simply come from scheduling uh, conflicts in the buildings when you have all the different uh, different teams in all these different buildings? or where, who, who came up with the idea of doing the, the school day game? Was, do you have any idea? I don't know who uh, who invented the concept, but it's been around for a number of years at various levels of, uh, of minor league hockey, and and uh, you know, I think it's it's something that uh, is looked at as a, a way to turn around, you know, your your average Tuesday, and, uh, yeah. and you know, it's it's always a cool thing, and it's a fun atmosphere. A lot of youngsters to the game of hockey who might not otherwise have uh, have gotten a look at, it. they could go out there with all their friends and uh, and check it out for a morning, and and you know, uh, it's just a it's a fun fun thing for everybody involved. I can admit to leaving leaving the station once or twice over the years and checking one out myself. So uh, definitely, it's a cool thing. You, know, you guys uh, have some fun with that. And as I said, not just there as you look ahead, but looking back the weekend, up and down there for the Monsters as well. Of course, uh, an emotional deal. You had the Make-A-Wish night the other night, but uh, uh, splitting a pair of games there. Talk to me about the games over the weekend for the Monsters. Well, it was a big one against the Rockford Icehawks. Big, a big set, I should say, uh, with Friday and Saturday's game. They were each 3-2 final scores in regulation. The Monsters won the Friday game, and they uh, fell short in the Saturday game. And, and uh, you know, to come away and get the split against the Rockford team that's been up near the top all season long, obviously not something that uh, you can be disappointed in. The Monsters were very good over the weekend, had good pressure against the Icehawks in, uh, in each game. And the second one showed a lot about the Monsters. They fell behind in the second period, but just kept battling and and almost tied the game up in the uh, in the late stages. They pulled it within three two on Saturday, very late in the game in the final minute. You know they were uh, you know in that game it was one of those classic cases where you just run out of time. I mean, if that game had another four to five minutes to play, I think the Monsters would have had a good chance to tie that game up, but not the way it goes. Sixty minute game, and uh, they just fell short three two. So now the Monsters have lost back to back in regulation and a uh, chance to get back on track here this weekend. These are two huge games and games that you need to capitalize on with Iowa coming in. And they're the, you know, they're the team at the very bottom of the 30 team American Hockey League right now. And they've struggled quite a bit. They've lost eight of their last nine games. They did give the Monsters a hard time out in Des Moines a little over a month ago, though. So they do have the ability to, to come up and bite you from time to time. But, uh, you know, at this point in the year with 24 games left and a back to back against the team struggling, these are the games that you have to win. Right, absolutely. You have to gobble these teams up here. You know, this is a situation where I, I remember similar uh, towards last season where you would get a point where you and I would talk once a week and the Monsters would just kind of be relatively in the same place as they were. And when you have too many of those in a row, then you start having to look up that mountain. Like you said, when you have a double shot here with the absolute last place team there, you just have to you have to be aggressive and take those because you cannot afford to let a single point against those teams slip when, like you said, that real estate keeps running out as we go closer and closer to the end of the season. 
and even even you know splits don't necessarily make any progress at this point in time. I mean, uh, all that's going to do is is uh, run you up closer to the end of the year where you just simply run out of time. So you look at where the monsters are; they're in a, they're still in good uh, good shape here. They've got fewer games played than a lot of the teams around them in the Western Conference. And uh, if they can come away and, and get the four points this weekend, they're right back up, back there knocking on the door with uh, Chicago five points up in that eighth spot. There are a couple of teams the Monsters have to jump, and sometimes, you know, overcoming the uh, point differential between them and the eighth place team, that could be easier than uh, you know jumping the the number of teams they have to get past. You've got uh, Adirondack in that mix, Hamilton there as well, and, and uh, then Chicago, of course, who's in that eighth spot. So there are three teams the Monsters have to leap over and. And as you said, these are opportunities you can't let get away. You can't look past teams. And, you know, the old adage, you have to take it one game at a time, and there aren't any gimmies at this point in the year especially. But, but uh, you know, with the, the homestand continuing along here, this will be game four of an eight-game homestand. You, you have to make some hay, make up some ground here on this homestand because after that, the Monsters will go on the road for eight of nine, and uh, they'll see some tough teams in the month of March as well. It doesn't really get any easier from uh, from this point forward. And, and uh, as I mentioned, Iowa – took two in a row from the Monsters in Des Moines during a three and three weekend back in January. So you can't take anything for granted against them. No, for sure. And you talk about those games in hand. I'm only one team. Adirondacks, the only team in the entire conference with less games played than the Monsters. So they are in a good position there too. And that's where you have to keep going, take advantage here, finish up. And we talked about what was coming after this homestand. So there it sits. You've got Iowa now coming into the queue for two this weekend. Friday, it's a 7.30 puck drop. Saturday, 7 p.m. And again, big ones. You have to you have to take care of business here. Beat the teams that you should beat. It's the only thing. It's the only thing you can do at this point. And then you start looking next week. They'll have a few days off, and then a couple more to wrap up this homestand. So uh, it's big to see what happens here. And, and you and I'll talk about it next week, Doug. Sounds like a plan. Absolutely, Doug Plagans, voice of the Lake Erie Monsters. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us, my friend. Thank you. You got it. That's Doug Plagans, voice of the Monsters. He's here every week with your Lake Erie Monsters update. Monsters, an up and down weekend here, culminated with a tough one yesterday. And like Doug said, you got to put that stuff behind you. You've got to, you got to move it, move it on quickly. And these are the teams you have to beat. I mean, looking ahead at that schedule, as we said, you had this eight game homestand, which looked great, and it is as you and you have to. You have to take advantage of that. You absolutely do. You've got. You don't want to just cut into the any sport, not just the monsters, but you don't want to just cut into try to cut into standings here and make your way up the standings while at the same time you're on the road and you're battling some of the tougher teams as well. So far, drop two of the first three on this homestand. You've got the set with Iowa this weekend. Then you've got Milwaukee and two with Chicago to finish off the homestand. And looking at the standings, those are both teams in front of you. Milwaukee sits right in the middle of the top half of the playoff pack. They're fourth in the conference. Chicago is that team that the Monsters are chasing right there in the eighth spot. Monsters sit 55 points. They're five points back from the eighth spot there from Chicago. As we said, though, games in hand. Monsters have only played 52. Every other team in the conference has played 53 or more. Some teams have played as many as upwards of 57 games here. So that plays into into things as well. But those things start to even out over the next few weeks as these teams catch up. And the race is on, and the Monsters have to take advantage of not only the weaker teams like Iowa, but the home real estate because then coming up on that you've got the Texas swing with double shots with Texas and San Antonio all on the road right there that's a tough stretch in that middle week of March then you got to finish things up you got Toronto then three more on the road after you come home Rockford and a couple with Charlotte so monsters need to uh, need to get to work here yesterday was a tough one to let slip but you have to put it behind you and you have to keep it moving we have to do the same thing put it behind us keep it moving today a little bit faster paced uh, addition to the show just the way things are falling today and we're going to take a break get you some news and get my man mike brandenberry on not only is mike brandenberry going to join us here we're going to talk some tribe oh yeah time to talk some indians baby let's warm it up we'll do all of that talk about the latest with baseball indians made some announcements involving t- Tickets. No, you still can't find out how much tickets will cost you on August 23rd. But they did make a couple of announcements today for some new pricing tiers. Which I'll tell you what, Jimmy Haslam's firing people in Berea right now. He's going, man, 
Why didn't we think of that, man? You get your first beer free? I mean, we should have been off. We should have owed. That shouldn't even be a marketing gimmick. That should have just been the price of admission. Like, here's your here's your ticket. Here's your drink. Have a seat, man. I'm just saying, with what they've done to Browns fans since 1999, Jimmy Haslam is living right now going, why didn't we think of that? Why didn't we think of that one first? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. We'll talk some Indians. We'll talk about all of that with Mike Brandenberry. Tribes buying the first beer for uh, for a new section of the ballpark. And question number eight for the Tribe Trivia Challenge. It's coming your way. Mike Brandenberry brought us uh, a good one last week. That's for sure. And he's got another one coming here today. Can't wait to bring it to you guys. Ten questions, ten days. If you have not... If you don't know, or if you haven't answered, haven't heard, don't know, today's your first time, you've missed out. But no fear, you can go back and you can still find out what I'm talking about next and then go back and answer some questions. Are you going to win the 1972 Cleveland Indians Gaylord Perry jersey, the shirt right off the man's back? Are you going to take it? All you have to do is answer more questions than anybody else. Question number eight from the Tribe Trivia Challenge coming up next, Mike Brandenberry. From did the tribe win last night.com joins us next here on the sports fix. There we go. That's what was wrong. I was fooling you. Them was jokes right there. Now we're going to go to break. Get you the news. Mike Brandenberry joins us next. The secret side of me, I never let you see. I keep it caged, but I can't control it. So stay away from me. We here at the Sports Fix want to make all of your dreams come true. What about my dream? Edith, I told you I can't build your candy house. It will fall down. The sun will melt the candy. It won't work. It will if it never rains. Oh, maybe not all of them. Get your fix on the Sports Fix. Harmony, harmony, this is head coach Gary Waters at Cleveland State, and you're listening to the Sports Fix. Whether it's an oil change or a new set of tires, Quick Lane at Valley Ford Truck has you covered for your automotive car care needs. They're your neighborhood quick service experts. They also offer a low price tire guarantee. Choose from 13 brands, and if you find the same tires at a lower price within 30 days, Quick Lane at Valley Ford will refund the difference. They're open late Monday through Thursday until 9 p.m. and open early Saturday so you can check it off your to-do list and get on with your day. They also have a newly remodeled service lounge and additional service bay just for Quick Lane oil changes. Quick Lane at Valley Ford Truck is located at 5715 Canal Road, right under the 480 Bridge in Valley View, just down the road from Independence. 5715 Canal Road, right under the 480 Bridge in Valley View, just down the road from Independence. Come see why life is better in the Quick Lane. Quicklane.com slash Valley Ford Truck. That's Quicklane.com slash Valley Ford Truck. Today on Save on Taxes, we ask 100 people what costs less than filing your taxes with IRS Free File. A car seat. Oh, a pair of shoes. The correct answer is nothing. When you use Free File, you get brand name software, tax prep, e filing, and help with the new health care provisions all for free. So, did we win anything? Everybody wins. Freefile.irs.gov. It's fast, it's safe, it's free. Business owners and professionals, do you want to take your business, your product, your team, your event to the next level? You want to advertise right here with the Sports Fix. Our listeners are among the most loyal listeners, terrestrial or internet. The Sports Fix universe is not only the radio show, but tens of thousands of fans on Facebook and Twitter. Email me, Jerry Myers, the Sports Fix at AOL.com. That's the Sports Fix at AOL.com. And let me help you swing for the fences and hit it out of the park right here on the Sports Fix. The Sports Fix is now available every day on the world's largest internet radio service, iHeartRadio. Download the free iHeartRadio app, subscribe to the show, and And get get your your fix. fix. News break. 
I'm Christine Lisi. Developing story. Former Louisville basketball player Chris Jones charged with sexually assaulting two women, reports the Louisville Courier General. The alleged assaults uh, I'm sorry, the alleged assaults occurred Saturday night after Jones scored 17 points in a win over Miami. According to the arrest warrant, one of the women was able to identify Jones as her assailant. The next day, the university, without explanation, said Jones had been kicked off the team. The Mets have tentatively scheduled Matt Harvey to pitch in the March 6th Grapefruit League game. It would be the first game for Harvey since August of 2013. He is returning from Tommy John surgery. Blue Jays outfielder Michael Saunders with a torn meniscus likely out until the All-Star break. Clippers coach Doc Rivers, who won an NBA championship in Boston with Rajon Rondo as his point guard, not surprised with the heated exchange between Rondo and Mavericks coach Rick Carlisle. Rivers added both men are warriors, and they'll figure it out. Rondo was benched the last 20 minutes Tuesday after shouting at Carlisle and was suspended for last night's game. Washington's Bradley Beal hoping to return from injuries tomorrow night versus the 76ers. Get to Subway and experience better for you and great tasting grilled chicken strips on your favorite sandwich. Premium cut all white meat chicken without artificial preservatives or flavors. Try them on a sweet onion chicken teriyaki or chicken and bacon ranch melt today. Subway, eat fresh. Now, back to the Sports Fix. Indian Fever. You can be part of the fun. You're the winner at every game. That's where the excitement begins. So catch Indian Fever. Be a believer with the Cleveland Indian. Welcome back to the Sports Fix Live here across the Sports Fix Radio Network. J-Rock, back with you. Keeping it moving, baby. Thank you for being with us. Thanks to Mike or excuse me, Mike Brandenberry is joining us next. Thanks to Doug Plagans, voice of the Lake Erie Monsters, for joining us, catching you up with your Lake Erie Monsters hockey action, a couple of big ones down at the queue. To check out next three days at the queue will be uh, full of some action here. Well, it'll be four in a row. You look back. For, yeah, there you go. But uh, Cavaliers tonight kicking off that run with the Warriors game, then a couple of Monsters games this weekend. Iowa at the queue. Check that out. Doug will be back with us next week. We'll see what's happening. We're going to keep things rolling here. Switch the focus to some warmer sports here as we'll we'll get off the ice and the cold and all of that stuff from hockey. Warm it up with some spring training talk, some Indians talk. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, maybe if you're new here, we do a lot of that here on the uh, on the sports fix. I don't know. Apparently, that's not the you know, Vogue thing to do, but we, we like it. And so we're going to keep doing it. Mike Brandenberry from did the try win last night.com is going to join us on the, I know we, we actually different people's thoughts on it. Like there's more than three people that, that talk about the Indians. It's great. Like all different opinions. It's nuts. It's crazy. I mean, you'd think a sport was starting up or something here, man. And, uh, and the crazy part is they didn't, they didn't even change the, any of the colors on their uniforms, man. They just put players in them and they're going out there to play. And we're going to talk about, it. That's the, I thought that's the way this is supposed to work. Plus, Tribe Trivia Challenge, Mike Brandenberry. Boy, he had a good one last week, and uh, it sent some of you guys on a search looking up the answers, and Mike's got another one. Question 8, Tribe Trivia Challenge, coming your way. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. You can talk to us on Facebook and Twitter, facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix CLE. You can email us the sports fix at AOL.com. On the phone, you can't call because Mike Brandenberry's hogging up the phone line. Mike Brandenberry, did the try win last night.com. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good, my man. You know, I was sitting here on hold. I, I got to tell you, I came back from lunch, and I pulled up the show, and you were in commercial at the time that you are normally <laughs> supposed to be. I'm so un- I knew you were like, going to say the, something. <laughs> the the agreed-upon time actually being the time. There, there I, are people that think that winds are changing in Cleveland sports just based uh, on the fact that Jerry Myers is on time today. It's not always going to happen, my friend. Enjoy it. Oh, I can't I promise that this happens again. But I, I honestly, that's so funny you said that because I looked at my uh, phone and I said, 
should I text Mike and tell him that we're like on time today? Because normally Mike and I talk in the morning and I'll be like, all right, cool. I'll talk to you at uh, 1245. And then at like 430, I go, okay, Mike, I'm ready for you, you know? And uh, so that's my, that's, that's, you know, you guys get it, you know, live radio. I tend to happen to talk a bit. So do my guests and sometimes things happen, but yeah, today couldn't have been more on the clock as usual. And I go, man, I wonder if Mike's going to know to call because he, he may be waiting. Yeah. Well, add 15 minutes for Jerry and then I'll call in. So works my out. My actual well, thought man. was that your first guest was probably just coming on. I, my first thought was you're probably somehow 25 minutes late, even though you're only 35 minutes into the show. Exactly. It has to be. Man. I figured you there was always. as good a chance of that <laughs> as that you were on time. So I was like, well, we'll just call and find out. Or maybe I'll just, you know, do my work and listen to Plague and say, you know, whatever. We're good, man. It worked out well, man. I'm glad to have you with us. Indian, speaking of working out well, so far, so good. Knock on wood, man. Listen, I'm going to start off by telling you where I'm at, like I've told everybody else here this week. And I know some of it is the natural enthusiasm that comes with the start of baseball after a dormant winter and all of that stuff. But, my man, I'm telling you. Um, outside of the usual, everybody's in the best shape of their life stuff that you get at this time of year. Man, a lot of these cats are in pretty good shape coming into spring training, and I've said it every day this week. I'll repeat it with you. We joked a lot last year, you and I, about you don't put unfinished business on T-shirts and then come out and play this way and do this and do that and, and do the things they did. This, the attitudes, and not just the lip service, but what you can see physically just in body changes and in people's focus. This, the way this team came into spring this year, the way most of these guys spent their winter, that's how you come in when you legitimately feel like you have unfinished business and you're going to go and do the things that you do instead of talking it, instead of, you know, the lip service to the game. This year, nobody put it on t shirt is coming in. I said it, it's like a bunch of guys had great in and have one good team goal. I know some of it is hopeful beginning spring training stuff. But I got a feeling that there's something here in the core of this team. You can see it in the eye of some of these guys, the way they got themselves ready. So many of them came in early, and they're hitting the ground running. I can feel something here at the beginning of spring training. Of course, it's got to happen, but I don't know. Where are you at? You think I'm crazy, don't you? I, I don't think you're crazy. I think, you know, for, for lack of a better term, I think some some people's feelings were probably hurt last year and maybe some some pride I don't want to say that they didn't have pride, but you know maybe some some uh, some pride was challenged or some manhood was was challenged a bit. But I mean, you know, I mean, I think there's three guys that definitely should you know shoulder a lot of the uh, the blame for the business still being unfinished, I suppose, and in Nick Swisher and Michael Bourne and Jason Kipnis, and those are you know three guys who seem to seem to be in camp at this point and uh and pretty focused and pretty determined and you know i think you know one of the things that i talk about all the time is i think it's unfair to expect the same um output from guys like Corey kluber and michael brantley and you know there's going to be some natural regression and that doesn't have to be a ton of regression but 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 some and and my question is always, if you're going to improve, then you're going to have to, you know, get some get some output from some places that you didn't, but you're also going to have to cover up that natural regression. And, you know, you look at guys like Kipnis, like Bourne, and like Swisher, I mean, they certainly all have the capability of having better years than they had a year ago, but they also have, you know, the capability of, you know, compensating for some mild regression from other guys if Michael Brantley doesn't hit 320 and hit 20 home runs all over again. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I get you. Way to put me back down on the ground. I'm with you, man. No, but those are all the questions when I say that still have to be, you know, played out and worked out. And like I said, everybody, everybody's in the best shape. Everybody spent the whole winter. You get a lot of that in the uh, in the spring here, and I understand that. But, man, I'll tell you, uh, health-wise, too, you know, catching up on some of the other conversations we've had this week, very encouraged. Brandon Moss are very, very encouraging because have, at least in all the talks I've had with so many different Indians fans over the winter, nobody ever really, like, does the whole, well, if he is healthy thing because there's so much just assumption 
that, you know, he's not going to be. There's no way that the Indians got this guy, you know, and and got him in here relatively, you know, cost effectively. And there's no way. But, man, if the reports are true, if he really is able to return to first half of last year, Brandon Moss, and even then he was beginning to deal with the hip, that's a that's a game changer in this Indians lineup, you know? Yeah, I agree, and and I think it to me it's something to watch all spring long, Jerry. Because as, as good as it sounds now, and you know, it kind of goes back to you know to your line that everybody's in the best shape of their life. You know, nobody wants to show up at spring training and still be nursing last year's injury. Um, you know, what, no matter what the timetable is, every, everybody wants to be ready to go. And it sounds like the Indians are saying and doing the right things when it comes to Moss, and that you know, they're going to kind of delay his start and he might not see too much action early on in, in exhibition games and maybe, you know, he gets his work in on some backfields and in a little bit uh, more controlled situation, which which is all great. Um, you know, I guess where I think it's something to watch, something to monitor throughout the spring is how much work does he get in in live play and, Will it be will it be enough that he's ready to go a hundred percent on opening day, or is this a guy who they're still going to have to monitor in the early going? And to be honest, do they do they want to be precautionary and and watch him maybe even a little bit more than than what is necessary? I mean, as I look out my window and watch it keep snowing, I mean we're we are not above having, you know, <laughs> frigid and snowy opening days and early Aprils. And, I mean, they're going to ask him, I think, to play a lot more outfield than he has and than he did last year. And so you're going to need a little bit more, you know, speed and range out of him. And it might be to their benefit to, you know, maybe – continue to to tighten those reins a little bit in the early going with an eye towards you know the the greater good and in the marathon and not just being ready for opening day yeah and a couple of other things too just to tag on to what you said is there's a difference like talking about that weather starting the season opening day in oakland and in cleveland and one of the things that i worry about even if he is uh, even if he is feeling better, is that that climate change that you're going to get a lot of, a lot of humidity, dampness, it may be rain a lot, cold, frigidness, uh, snow, heat. You, that You can go through the gamut of that stuff at the early part of a baseball season here in Cleveland, as we know. And uh, that's different, too, like I said, from a West Coast uh, coming from that. and uh, But that alone, that switching, as you know, if you've got, if you're a runner, if you've got knees that are creaky or whatever, as that humidity and that water and the rain and the snow, all those things mix, that can cause uh, some issues, too, that he may not be used to necessarily dealing with. So those are things that play into that conversation along with everything you named. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, I, I think, you know, one one story time to another story to another story, kind of the way, you know, spring training unfolds and how your roster is built. I mean, I think Brandon Moss and just how ready he is and how, how much they think he can give them in the early going probably also in some ways has an effect on a guy like David Murphy who yes. really kind of appears to be the odd man out. I was going to go um, there. And, and, yeah. and, you know, a, a guy without a role, well – you know, if they feel that, you know, maybe maybe Moss gets, you know, more playing time in warmer weather, you know, and they kind of try to avoid some of that, you know, cold, you know, damp weather that you were just talking about, maybe then David Murphy, you know, has at least a, a short-term role. And, you know, and then that's the kind of thing where you never know how the season goes. I mean, some guys have had, you know, short-term roles that, you know, one thing leads to the, to the another. And the next thing you know, they're, they're here all season or they play their way into a lineup and, you know, then they become a guy that they can't get out. So, you know, we'll, we'll see, but I mean, I think, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, Brandon Moss's health is probably tied to David Murphy's roster spot in some ways. And, you know, if Brandon Moss is truly a hundred percent and able to go, you know, I think, the Indians are and will continue to monitor, you know, other teams potentially yep. looking for an outfielder and, and maybe make a move with Murphy. But 
if Moss isn't 100% and isn't able to go, you know, it might become a little bit more difficult to to make that move. Now, Dan said, I'm going to save some of this for Mike because this was his trade that he's been talking about. But, yeah, um, once you see our health-wise, Swisher, these different guys, Rayburn, what he's going to bring you, then, yeah, most definitely that opens up. And you've been kind of, saw making the most sense if the other things work out for the Indians to move him. And Dan and I were kicking that around yesterday, you know, seeing whether whether it's seeing if somebody goes down in spring training and there's a need there or you find a contender that's looking for that, uh, as Dan said, like 24th, 25th guy. It's a question of, uh, what do you think? We were kicking around yesterday. You know, that's the kind of thing does a David Murphy at his price tag bring in if you do move him? Because, you know, what is the, what do you get? Do you look to get a decent prospect, like, you know, the kind that the uh, the Indians pulled out last year in those trades? Or or do you get somebody that can help you at the major league level now? What, where do you think that would, what would David Murphy bring in? I would be blown away if they got a player of any kind of value back, assuming that the team that took him was taking his salary. Um, the the Indians have have always liked to try and get better players in return by being willing to to eat some yeah. to eat eat salary in the middle of the season. I just have a feeling, and, and maybe I'll be wrong. Um, but I have a feeling that they would be a little bit more reluctant to eat his salary before the season starts. In a, you know, in a game that doesn't have a salary cap, I think we all know that the Indians operate on one, and I think moving him creates a situation where they almost open six million dollars. And if they feel as if they're a contender, then they have, you know, almost the NBA analogy that you know they have almost like a $6 million expiring contract that they can use that cap space to maybe take on a salary in the middle of the season, um, you know, to address a need or, or to try and fix a a developing hole of some kind. When you get near the trade deadline, it's it's not often that the Indians are in the market to take on salary, but if they, I don't know if dump is the right word, but if they dealt Murphy um, and were able to dump his salary, I think, dumping the salary would be what they would be getting the value. Return, so I don't yeah, know that they yeah. would get a lot of play earn. No, I get you. Yeah, the value is, hey, pay this $6 million for us here, man. You know, we've got this bright, shiny outfielder we can send you in exchange for that. No, I get you. I just, I was on well, Like I you told... said, I mean, d- depending, on the, depending on the place, I mean, if, if there's an injury to a team in the next six weeks, you know, depending on the team and, and what their salary structure is. I mean, to give you an example right now, I mean, and I think if Murphy is dealt, it'll be at the end of spring training because every team has their own storylines that we're right. talking about and they want to see them play out before they go make a move for someone. But, I mean, there's rumors, you know, and stories leaking about Josh Hamilton and facing potential yes. suspension. And, you know, if the Angels feel as if they're a team that, can contend and I certainly think they do and and they're also a team that doesn't really operate under a salary cap so they have they have money to eat and to waste if they need to I mean if they feel that David Murphy can can keep you know them on track if he's a better option in their mind to start the season than maybe a a young player um, that's maybe not quite ready and and would be better off in triple a you know that's a deal that LA maybe makes and and takes Murphy on and says you know we'll we're, we'll worry about having too many outfielders when that situation presents itself in midseason but you know we need a veteran right now I mean that's that's the type of thing that could play out and the LA would be I would assume would be willing to take that salary and when they take Murphy's salary you know I don't think you would get a lot of player in return but I mean I think it would depend on the team. I mean, that, to me, that's the kind of team that you're looking for if you're the Indians to take David Murphy, a team that's willing to take his salary. I agree. I agree. You're listening to the Sports Fix. Mike Brandenberry from DidTheTribeWinLastNight.com. J-Rock here. We're talking some Indian spring training, getting rolling here. You brought up Josh Hamilton, by the way, man. I, don't, I know a lot of the, the details still to come out, but from some of the stuff that I saw there, uh, a bit of a unique situation. I mean, obviously it's – 
it's troublesome either way, and that's something that, as a person, you hope he can deal with. But um, a bit different than failing a drug test is this appears to be somebody who uh, admitted whatever his mistakes were, his relapse was, went to baseball and stepped forward before he was caught. And I've always said, like when you talk about the steroid guys, to me, there's a difference when you look at, oh, well, this guy was honest. I said, was he honest when he failed a drug test and then told you what he did? Or did he just walk up one day and go, hey, look, I messed up. Here's what I did. Before anybody finds out, I'm going to tell you. There's always a difference. And maybe this falls under that rare category there instead of the uh, the usual. Yeah, I, you know, I think, you know, anyone who has known someone or anyone who has, you know, fought some kind of addiction themselves, you know, will, will tell you that the fight really never ends. Um, you you know, you, you try to win today and then you win tomorrow when tomorrow gets here and, you know, one day at a time. And, um, you know, when, when I heard and, and kind of read some of the stories last night, um, I feel bad for the guy. Um, I definitely don't feel bad for, um, you know, PED users. Um, to me, those are, those are guys that are cheating themselves, cheating the game and, and they're doing it to make money. You know, there, there's no way around that. I mean, I don't care if you're, if you're Barry Bonds, Alex Rodriguez, or a minor leaguer, um, trying to get to the big leagues at the end of the day, if you take PEDs, you're, you're doing it to make yourself more money. Um, I'm not sure how anyone could make the case that, you know, Josh Hamilton is doing things or making poor decisions of some kind, how that's helping him financially. As a matter of fact, it's probably costing him financially. It's probably cost him, you know, in a lot of ways, more money than, than we can even, you know, calculate over his career. I mean, for a guy who was a number one pick, um, you know, fell completely how to baseball, um, got back up off the map, you know, saved his career, um, and and now still seems to be fighting some of those demons from time to time. I mean, I think he was a guy that teams when he was a free agent were, um, you know, leery at times to invest in because they weren't trusting. So I feel bad for the guy because, I mean, taking, taking the money issue out of it, I mean, he's making poor decisions for himself, and I think that's just, a you know, a, a sign of, of true addiction and and it, that never ending battle of you know one day at a time and even though you know you've been clean or you've been sober for x amount of months or x amount of years you know I don't think those demons ever really truly go away and, and that's I mean I think that's unfortunate for Josh Hamilton and for you know any person who who fights those addictions that's for sure I definitely agree with a lot of what you said, and I understand a lot of that, too. At the same time here, man, this is a... I got to tell you, I can see a scenario where it's going to be very difficult, even though some people are taking a more sympathetic tact at this particular incident. I mean, man, I mean, he's only back in the game because didn't he have to get the special exemption from the commissioner to get reinstated back into the game? So I believe, he, yeah, I believe yeah, so. He, He's I mean, I, I would unique... assume that he's going to face some kind of punishment, and I'm not. Oh, saying very that much, buffed, very much. That he's buffed out you... or shouldn't. I mean, if anything. No, I, I mean... no, that's not what I'm saying, Mike. I'm just saying, like I, I, when you, I mean, like you say, the grip of addiction is tough, man. And you know, you sit here, whether it's whether it's here, people talk about Josh Gordon and, and the things that he did, and these other athletes, and uh, it continues. The relapse isn't happening. You look at the number of incidents like that, you go, man. Um, it's a it's a road that never ends. I mean, you really could see it being very difficult for him to resume any kind of productive uh, career, at least at this end. And to me, there's a difference between understanding and and feeling sorry and, and sympathy and wanting to see a guy straighten himself out and whether he should play baseball anymore or not. Because at that point, it goes way beyond whether you play a sport or not, you know. But I just see that perhaps this could play out in a way that there's really not a lot of uh, – productive end left baseball wise for him you know yeah i you know i worry about josh hamilton the person Mm -hmm. maybe maybe when when baseball ends for him or in in some way because anyone that i've known that has has struggled with any kind of addiction 
you know, the best thing for, for a person is structure and, yes. and yes. routine. And when you get off that structure, you get off that routine, you know, basically of making good choices or doing the right thing. When, when there's too much freedom, it's, it's easy to, or it's easier to, to make a Absolutely. bad choice. And, yes. you know, I, I think, you know, you look at guys who, I mean, you, I guess you can look at it in one of two ways. I mean, certainly being a professional situation where you have the availability to all the bad things, um, you know, money don't have to work out when you don't have to, you know, time when you don't have to, you know, get your weight lift, do those things when structure kind of leaves and, you know, I have those that, those that, you know, don't have any kind of, you know, addiction, you know, what they do their first year or two out of the game, no matter what sport it is, it's tough for those guys because it's the first oh, time yeah. structure in their life. Yeah. And so, I mean, like you said, this is the end game for Josh Hamilton. You know, I hope, I really do hope that, you know, Major League Baseball, I mean, punishment or not, I'm not trying to excuse him from some kind of repercussion, but hopefully they and the Angels, you know, do everything to to help him um, and, and try and help, you know, rehabilitate as much as possibly punish because, you know, hopefully his life is a lot longer than his baseball career and, and dealing with those demons is going to be important because, I mean, I've known guys, I've, you know, I've coached high school sports for, you know, a long time and, and I've known guys who've played professionally and, I, I'm not making not making light or making fun in any way, but some of those guys they look like little lost puppy dogs when they come back and their careers are over, and oh, you know yeah. because they're it's it's all they know, you know if they've, they've you know we kind of joke about it, but they they get to play a kids game and they've played it since they were kids, and you know that's their adult life, and when their career ends, whether it's thirty, thirty five, forty, whenever. You know, when when you're out of the game, you turn around, and the next thing you know, you know you're you're an adult, and there's not a lot of direction. It's it's not like you and me. You know, we all get up on Monday and go to work. Um, you know, that's different for those guys, and and it's a lot of directions that they can go. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Trust me. Like I've personally, even on my own level, been through some stuff like that. And uh, you know, now that I'm getting back into doing a little bit of a little bit of athletics, doing some wrestling again, I'm going, man. What what am I gonna do? When, like, because I can do this. What I just did, I can do it once. I can take a few years off. I can get out of shape. I can say, you know what? I can. I got one more run left in me. I'm gonna get back in out of shape and get back into shape. But I I've come to the realization in the last few months. I go, man. You know, I only get to do this once. Like, I if I do this again, there is no coming back because there'll be you know, I'll be too old and too much time will go by, and that's it. So that's cool. I got to come back once, but the next time it's for real, and there really is no more. Boy, because you do, you go crazy when all of a sudden, you know. And I'm talking about on a minuscule level compared to uh, a guy like that. When that spotlight's not on you, when you don't, when your phone's not blowing up because everybody wants to book you, and when you're not in demand, and when you're not, when it's moved on, and you go, man, how did everybody forget about me already? That is a tough place to be plus physically you like to use your body you like to go to work or go to sport or whatever it is practice work out train have games you lose that competitiveness too and you're like you're a different person and i'm it is very tough for anybody even if you've got a solid ground it's very tough to deal with too so you're absolutely right and that's when you don't have any problems that's when you're just a normal athlete who quit doing what you do you you, you go crazy so add that to it and you're right that's where you you see guys that really and you hear about it all the time those stories where it'll pop up on the news and you'll go wow that's a shame i remember that guy that's what happened to him is he could not handle all the things that happened after he left his sport. Yeah, definitely. And that's, that's why I really hope, you know, I hope Josh Hamilton can get some help and I hope he can get back on track. And, you know, like I said, I hope that major league baseball and the angels both, you know, do everything to help him the person and worry about Josh Hamilton, the baseball player later, because, because that's around the corner for him and he's got to live the rest of his life and, and hopefully, you know, they can, 
they can help him get back on the road to making good decisions. Because I right. mean, I don't, I don't think anybody roots for for people to to go down those dark roads. Nope. It's the same thing, like I said, about Josh Gordon, man. I I want them, I root for you to get fixed, get help, support, all of that stuff. I could care less if you play your sport again. I mean, that one, you've kind of now, you've put that one up in the wind. Whether you get to do it again, if you do, then you're fortunate. If not, then unfortunately, that's the, the price to pay. But what's much more important is straightening you out and, and making sure that you're <laughs> going to not be a destructive member of our society for the rest of your life either, you know, because like you said, there's a much much bigger picture. Hey, getting back to the uh, getting back to the Indians a little bit here, talking about spring training and things going on. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming out. Of course, you know, some of my favorite, Terry Pluto, always good stuff in spring training time. And I liked his breakdown, his piece this week. I think it was, was it yesterday or the day before on Carlos Carrasco. And uh, we keep talking about how important he is. But uh, listening to Carrasco recount with Terry his tale of how he got back and got himself into where we hope he can be here this season. And you and I talked last year about how that trip to the bullpen seemed to really be the thing that unlocked it. And really, we've seen that. And Carlos talked about that, how much going in the bullpen and all of a sudden going, you know what, I don't have to worry about pitching to this guy three times and what am I going to do in the seventh inning and what am I going to throw him later? I'm just getting one guy out at a time. He changed his mindset, and for the first time we saw what people had been tantalized with with Carlos Carrasco for so many years. Yeah, um, and I I give the Indians a lot of credit because I'll be the first one to admit, and I think there will be a long line behind me, of people that would have given up on Carlos Carrasco. I did. Um, I'm I'm I I'm did. pretty sure we did this show the the yep. week that he made his first start, you know, in August and and without, you know, having to go back and roll tape, I'm pretty sure I probably said that that wasn't a very good idea. Um because I actually thought when he found a role in the bullpen in the and bullpen. seemed to be yeah. pretty yeah. successful, yeah, you know, why why mess uh you know why mess with a good thing you know it took him three years to find something good <laughs> and then to and then uh you know to mess with it you know only weeks or a couple months later i kind of really thought it was a bad bad move and uh you know props to the indians and to terry francona and i think you know um another another feather in mickey calloway's hat i would say um of successes to me um you know i i agree with you and and many other people that think you know carlos carrasco is a is a gigantic storyline to this year and you know to me i don't think you can expect carlos carrasco to have a 1.72 era and be and be the best uh starting pitcher um in baseball like he was in the second half of last year but you know, can he take what he did last year and bring it over, you know, bring it into this season? Can can he carry that from year to year? And I think that really is a big test that, that certainly hasn't been answered yet. But, you know, you got to be able to go from, you know, a six-week great streak and take it to the next level to really kind of, I would say, complete the process, if you will. But, um, I think I think he's a big storyline for sure, and to go with that, a guy that I think has, in a lot of ways, suffered from a lot of the same problems that Carlos Carrasco had. Um, you know, worrying about you know setting guys up and and instead of just getting the guy out in front of you, um, you know, worrying about the complete package a guy that I can see almost replacing Carrasco in that bullpen role is Zach McAllister. He doesn't have any options. He can't return to AAA. Um, so he's going to be on the big league roster. And I really feel like Zach McAllister is a guy who could go to the bullpen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who's always middle of the road and the guy who, you know, maybe doesn't get too high. And I feel like, I feel like Zach McAllister is destined for the bullpen, and it's just a matter of what is going. I almost feel like I'm too high on him because I because I feel like 
there are two scenarios that I can see happening, and both are good. Uh, I feel like he can go to the bullpen, and he is a guy who has a big arm and who can, I think, if if asked to just throw one inning, I can see a scenario where by the middle of the season, Zach McAllister starts to make a seven eight nine with Shaw and Allen, and you toss Zepchinski in there and you start to have a real solid back end of the bullpen. And I can also see a situation where maybe the Indians are a little reluctant, as they were with Carrasco. I, when Carrasco was in the bullpen, I, as he had success, I thought that they should have moved him towards the back end, and they didn't, obviously, because they thought that he still had a chance to be a oh, yeah, starter. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, we were both I, I wonder if, that. Yeah. you know, I wonder if McAllister kind of finds that same approach. If they don't move him to the back, can he be a guy maybe by midseason who can transform from the bullpen back to the rotation again Right. if things in the rotation don't go well because – we sit here, you know, at the end of February and talk about all of their rotation options. But I can also tell you there is not any – everyone that we talk about, that's all that's on, on the table. There, that's all that's on your plate. There is no one at Double A or Triple A that I think is going to make a big splash or surprise – if things don't go well in the rotation, if there's an injury or something, you know, we're going to be back to talking about Zach McAllister and Josh Tomlin and TJ house. And, you know, there's not going to be a surprise guy like Cody Anderson pitched at double a last year and really had a tough year and struggled. And I think they would be very reluctant to go to him. Um, It would be a last resort situation. And after that, the pickings get even thinner. So uh, in some ways your rotation's deep, but it's not all that deep because, because there's no surprises around the corner. You know what? Let me jump in there. I threw a name out yesterday to Dan, and I'm just going to throw it out to you. And again, this is, this is a total, Hey, it's all upside, no downside here. Maybe nothing comes of it. But when you say there's no surprises around the corner, something in my gut tells me, that if, if, of course, all the health issues are taken care of, uh, Sean Markham is a name that I think a lot of people overlook. Dan and I were looking at his up until he got hurt, you know, looking at what he did. This is a guy, he wasn't just a 500 guy. He was 22 games over 500 for that five-year stretch up until 2012. And again, I'm not saying he comes off and wins the Cy Young or anything like that, but if he's healthy, that's a guy that's better than a whole lot of people, I think, think that he may still be. That's a guy who could really be a surprise guy down the road. Yeah, I agree. Um, he would be such a surprise because of his injury problems for the last couple of years. I mean, I'll be honest, I totally forget about him. Yeah, um, everybody that's, does. That's, everybody I mean, does. I mean, when I, yeah. when I talk about the cover being bare other than the guys that we know, um, it's because I totally forgot about Sean Markham. He's, he's almost like urban legend at this point. He's a point, question you know? mark, but he's um, intriguing, man. He's He's got he something. Is. He is. So, um, you know, and it'll be interesting to see. I mean, he's another uh, another guy, I guess, to keep an eye on. I can't see him making the team. Um, things would have to go sideways really bad. Um, you know what? Terry said that, too. He said simply as far as opportunity, he goes, when a guy's been gone two years, I don't know how fair it is that you can judge him off of what, 18, maybe 20 innings that he's going to end up uh, pitching here. So, you know, I see him as a guy that would definitely have to go, you know, show it down a triple A. But that's what I mean. I'm just keeping him in mind, just kind of bigger picture and going, dude, this guy bounces back. That's a that's a major league arm that is back in your equation again that people just, like you said, forgot all about. For sure. For sure. And I think, you know, like you said, he – if healthy and able to pitch, he'll start the year at Triple A. But yeah, I mean, if he goes to Triple A and get guys out, um, that could definitely be a be a big boost to the rotation. I mean, I'm again, I'm not predicting doom and gloom for anyone, but let's I mean, let's be realistic. 
it doesn't happen very often when the five guys you leave spring training with are the five guys that you have in the rotation <laughs> at the end that. of the season. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, I mean, logic just tells you that it isn't going to be that smooth. So, um, you know, there'll be bumps along the way, and and I mean, that's you know why the old cliche you can never have too much pitching. Pitching, I mean, that's why that cliche exists. So. I mean, a guy like Markham, if healthy, yeah, I mean, he could be a huge surprise. Yeah, you know, and I, like you said, what did they end up with? Two two of the, the the starting rotation was still the same by the end of the season? Was that it, or was it even two? Yeah, it was – that was yeah. it. I mean, the whole thing blew out so quickly. You're you're right. And that's what I that's another thing I dig about this is that that's the one thing. When you and I talked in the winter and about whether the Indians were going to try to do the same thing or what their mentality is coming into each season, I do believe and you and I talked about it a couple of weeks ago that they did learn their lesson. Clearly, they learned their lesson from that last year from going, okay, we got five guys and one or two extra guys here that could fill in the spot, and we're good to go at pitching. And they realized that they needed to have double that depth to really be able to handle what happened. And this year, they've overprotected themselves, at least in my thought, as far as starting the season, because you've got such a deeper, more capable group. And that's the thing. It, it truly is deeper. It's not just bodies of guys that could fill the spot. I said it the other day, and I'll say it again here with you. When you look at the guys that were last year, we're trying to figure out who's going to be three, four, five, who's going to fill what spots. Now those guys are all fighting for one spot. You know, the, the depth, I think, shows a little bit more, and it does show me that they did learn their lesson in that regard from last year because they have a lot of options for the first uh, part of the season if guys flame out or don't get started or get banged up early stuff like that yeah and 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 things change and things change fast i mean fast. Uh, as you said i mean <laughs> i mean last year last year on opening day everybody said hey our rotation's good and good. you know not even not even 365 days later you look at that opening day rotation of justin masterson Corey kluber zach McAllister, danny salazar and carlos carrasco and go oh yikes you know i mean that's that's not yeah. a very uh, pretty picture from the start <laughs> to finish as a, as, a, as a group, you know. And, um, you know, and, and you look at the way that the first half went, I I think you're right. The Indians have done a lot to make sure that they have that depth um, so that when things don't go well, hopefully they're they're ready with a with another man up. Um, I would say I would say that last year is a good example of, it, it's almost unfair to count on all of these guys to be successful. I mean, I, again, I'm not, you know, picking anyone to fall off the map, but when you look at, you know, a projected rotation of, I think a lot of people assume that Danny Salazar is maybe the leader in the clubhouse going into the, to the fifth rota- fifth spot uh, battle. So, I mean, if you're looking at a rotation of, you know, Kluber, Carrasco, Bauer, Gavin Floyd, and Danny Salazar on opening day. Um, you know, there's a lot of people hanging their hats on on that's what's going to make the Indians good is all this young pitching, and and it's true. It's good reason to believe, but I think it's also good reason. You know, look at last year, and you know you you're not going to go five for five with those guys, and so you know you better be ready for you know whoever struggles to have those replacements. And have them be big league caliber, not triple A replacements, which was, you know, also, and that's where the depth comes in. That's part of what's got me, uh, got me so excited here about this is, is I really have definitely, I'm buying the cow when it comes to the Indians pitching. And that's when going back to the first thing we talked about, when I look at, you know, a guy like Moss and, uh, you know, Dan and I were saying yesterday, dude, this guy comes back healthy. And all of a sudden, hey, listen, it's a lot better for Carlos uh, Santana to walk 115 times if people have to worry about the guy coming up behind him. And then you start to look at how you can permutate that lineup a little bit, and, and it really does. Because what we've always gone back to needing that other power source in that lineup to kind of bridge the parts of it together and and make sure that you had ways to make pitchers pay. And, and between that and... If he's able to be that role, be that guy, and being being able to go lefty righty switch and and have a lot of uh, uh, variability there, man, you I, I like the way the Indians lineup falls together a heck of a lot more if you've got a legit healthy guy in Brandon Moss there as added into that lineup. 
Yeah, and I mean, in a lot of ways, he's essentially going to kind of take David Murphy's job. And big you know, difference, you though. At, you know, I mean, look sure, at the power sure. numbers. You know, and that's where I was going to go. Is you know, I mean, one of the knocks on on the Indians is their inconsistent offense. Um, and when you add a guy, you know, when you basically you take David Murphy out and you put Brandon Moss in, you know, he's a guy that can help you score quick. You know. Um, because he because he can hit the ball deep and um, you know other than Santana, I mean even though Brantley had 20 home runs last year, I'm not sure that people really consider him a, a true power threat. Um, you know I think he's a guy that, that had a good a good season and I think 20 might be his you know a lot closer to his high end. Um, Moss and Santana, you know I, I think they each have you know, high end and potential to, to get into the 30 range. Um, yeah. and, and they're guys that can, you know, certainly help you score quick. And if you can score quick from time to time, you know, with the long ball, then you'll have a lot less games of three runs or less, which seem to be the Indians' problem. You know, when, when it takes – getting a hit is hard. Getting three of them to score a run is even harder. And so, they, you know, being he, being able to shoot a gap and being able to hit the ball out of the park, you know, is is obviously important. And I think that's that's one big way where the Indians offense has struggled. That's it. And then the psychology of it, too, when the Indians offense is able to do what you just described, then when your pitching is doing like the Indians were doing down the stretch last season, if your pitching is pitching like that, now instead of teams buckling down and going, okay, well, they're not going to score either, so we just got to hang in here and we've got to you know just scratch one out here and then we'll match them in a good pitching matchup. Now you do that, that's when you demoralize guys, when, when you nail the big shot and then they go – damn, Kluber's coming back out here. We haven't been able to touch him all day. Now all of a sudden, you know what I mean? I mean, it's common sense baseball, but, you know, you just you hope that the pieces do fall together that way for him. But, I mean, that was it. They didn't go out, and that was the big stick that they got. And I think, you know, the upside of that, at least, it's still there. A lot of people just, and it's so easy to go, yeah, well, you know, he's hurt. He's not going to bounce back. You know why? Because the Indians got him, you know. But, uh, you know, occasionally they do, and you got to hope. Uh, that he is one. But, you know, seriously, looking at what he said, he said, man, I haven't felt this good in a minute, and that's not just the usual. So you hope he's being legit, and we'll have to find out when he starts playing some games. But I'm fired up, and uh, I know some of it is because the spring training usual startup, but I am, I got a feeling, man, that this club can turn into, I think that this season can manifest itself the way a lot of people projected last season to do that because like you said there's embarrassment there's some people that that got a little got their got themselves brought back down to reality real quick and then all winter long there's terry francona reminding you of that in a in a professional way hey man if we want to do what we got to do we got to go back and one of the questions that he said a lot of the guys broached uh poached to him that he liked was how many people mentioned when you look at a guy like Brantley and the the improvement that he made, you know, steadily to get where he was and taking that next step? And how many guys mentioned to Terry Francona in the opening meeting that they had how they wanted to be that guy? They wanted to take that next step this season. And like you said, not everybody's going to do it, but when everybody's when the whole team is legitimately you know, going in that goal, enough of them will that this could be what a lot of people thought last season was going to be as far as really taking that next step from two years ago. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, to be honest, I think that environment and that attitude, that's a, to me, that is a great um, testament to Terry Francona. Yes, because I think yes. he creates that. And I think there are other, there are other managers who don't create that. I mean, they're, I mean, we we pick on Michael Bourne and we pick on Nick Swisher often, and they are they are guys who <laughs> you know have not have not earned their contract and are on the the downside of their career. But you can also go around the league and you can look at other teams that are aging before your eyes, um, and you know give give Terry Francona credit for for nothing else um, than trying to get those guys and others you know, motivated to, you know, possibly, you know, fight back against father time because you can look at other teams, um, guys that hit, you know, the downside of 30 and, and close in on their mid-30s, 
um, you know, guys that, guys like that that have big contracts. You know, there are guys on other teams around the league who, who uh, aren't coming into spring training with that mindset of, you know, I'm I'm going to work as hard as anyone. Their their checks are still coming in, and uh, you know they'll put the effort in that they have and and let their numbers continue to decline. Yep, and I think part of that, like you said, the biggest part is Terry Francona. They've also got just the right combination. I mean, roster composition between veterans and hungry young guys and guys that still have things to prove, that's when you get that right combination of attitude in the locker room. And that that environment gets contagious and competitive quickly. And that's why I use the term, you know, this could turn into something, you know, a little special when you have that attitude. It has nothing to do with just the talent. Talent determines how far it can go. But when you've got a whole locker room with that contagious spirit and that and a guy like Terry Francona pushing it through, that truly is what I hang my head on when I say, guys, I'm not, I know last year I called them a team of destiny, but I'm saying this year maybe they appear to have done the things that, you know, really do put you in that direction. And we'll see. It's a long, long journey to get there. But I am encouraged by what we've seen early on. Yeah, I think so. And I think that when we get closer to the, the start of the season and opening day, to me, to go along with everything you said, I, I think it's important for this team to get off to a good start. Um, I don't yeah. think they have to blow the doors off of everyone, but the last couple of years and even before Terry Francona, um, you know, this, this team seems to have a bad, bad habit of getting off to a slow start and spending all summer playing catch up. And, yeah. This division is wide open, and you talk about that that attitude and that confidence, and and even you know with the offensive approach and how other teams can can look at at the Indians when you turn the page and the next starting pitcher is just as tough as the last yep. one. Yep. If you get off if you get off to a good start, you know all of that confidence just continues to grow, and I think that that's really important, especially in a year where I think we all feel like the division is as wide open as it's been in a long time. And I'm right there with you. You talked about that lineup, I mean the rotation. That's where I go, man, look at that depth. All of a sudden teams are like, oh, cool, we got through Kluber and Carrasco. Oh, here come. Wow. All right. It doesn't get any easier, you know. Our five guy is facing who? Sal? Oh, man. Didn't he start the playoff game for them two years ago? You know, and that'll show you the depth, too, there as you as you stretch that out, man. I am uh, I am definitely with you, and uh, we'll see, man. I'm excited to see how things go, how things come together. It's a long, long journey, but uh, a, a, an encouraging group of stuff here to start this thing so far. Hey, man, before we let you go, you know, by the way, last week, Mike, your trivia question on the uh, the Tribe Trivia Challenge, man, not only uh, was that one, that was a good one, man, but people were chasing that thing down left and right, man. I got, I got all kinds of people in on that. Hey, wait, you're wrong. This is the answer. That's the answer. I had to do so much backup research on your question. People tracked down things we didn't even know were out there, man, by the time we were done, but that was some good stuff, man, uh, with with your uh, with your trivia question last week, I don't know if you can top that, man. I do not know if you can follow up on last week. We'll see, we'll see what we can do. I don't, I don't know if this one's quite as good, but I, I like a good question that's not easy to be googled. If, if you can just Google the answer, I mean, I'm I I look at kids every day that don't know anything about sports, but they know how to work the internet, so they can they can find trivia answers that way. So. My question this week is, unfortunately, we know in Cleveland that some of our favorite athletes don't always hang around for the entire length of their career. So my question is, who is the last Cleveland Indian to make an all-star game and play their entire career as an Indian? Ooh, that's a good one. All right, guys. Question number eight in the Tribe Trivia Challenge. Remember, 10 questions, 10 days. Most correct answers is going to win the 1972 Gaylord Perry Cleveland Indians jersey. You email your answer to thesportsfix at AOL.com. This is a tough one because when you gave it to me, I was like, man, wow. Uh, that's a good one, man. The Indians. You can we start know, thinking of a lot of good all-stars. And yeah, then you'll be like, absolutely. Nope, nope, he left. Nope, he do- left, too. 
It's going to take yep, you some cross-referencing for sure. But Cleveland Indians franchise history, who is the player who became an all-star and played the entire length of his career for only the Cleveland Indians, right? That is the question. That's the, yeah. the simplest yeah, who way is, to put Who it. is the last player? There's been more than one, but who okay, is the last Okay, there's been more player. than one. Who is the most recent player who has been an all-star here in Cleveland who played their entire course of their career only for the Cleveland Indians. Good luck looking that one up. Uh, hit us up with your answer, the sports fix at AOL.com. And, hey, something – you know what? We can talk some more about this next week, but just a minute here before I let you go. Uh, the, the Indians, even though, as I talked about it the other day, even though uh, you can't find out how much – a ticket's going to be on, you know, August 23rd right now. They did let you know that they have at least established one. Uh, oh, we can get to talking about tickets at another time, I know. But uh, the uh, the district ticket, the tribe is offering the uh, standing room only in the bar section that they're opening up. And it gives you the first drink. I said earlier, I said, Jimmy Haslam's mad. Why didn't we think of that? We should have been giving away a drink with these tickets a long time ago for a much different reason. But uh, the uh, the new standing room only. Here's the scary thing to me, Mike is that you don't have a this is a great idea once the park is full again but when you're not filling up the park i can just foresee a standing room only section that's packed with a bunch of empty seats underneath it you know but uh the indians did announce that one and they also announced the uh the giant clubhouse as well the new kids section there but what are your thoughts on the uh, district ticket with the first drink on the house i think it's a great idea um people complain about People complain about everything when it comes to the Indians. Absolutely. They complain about they complain about vending prices. They complain about the price of a ticket. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know how you can beat this one. And you know, my I guess my counter argument to yours in that you know we'll have an empty stadium with a bunch of standing room only uh, tickets. We could probably do the rest of your show on this topic, but the Indians should just worry about getting people in the ballpark. I don't care if they're standing, sitting. Oh, I agree. If they're, I if agree. they're in wheelchairs, yes. just get them there. However, you get them there. Um, I know they've said that it's a it's a limited number per game, so I don't know how limited that that number is or isn't. But you know, if it if it takes a ten dollar ticket or a thirteen dollar ticket and uh free drink to go with it i mean let's just get them in the stands and and hopefully the team on the field gives them reason to want to come back oh i'm i'm 100 percent in agreement with that for 13 dollars, and as you said it's a limited uh number of tickets but they don't tell you how much that limit is so i don't know what the tribe's cap is but it's standing room only in the new district area where they've got the bar set up in a couple of restaurants and they'll give you the first and it doesn't have to be a beer it could be a beer or a uh, or a pepsi product or a bottled water but your first drink is on them i'm with you man i'm just uh i just i'm going back to the fact that i know for 13 dollars i could stand i don't have the slightest idea how much i can buy any other ticket for here unless i want to buy season tickets but like you said we could go off in uh in that direction a different day little birdie told me a funny story the other day mike brandenberry yeah. from did the tribe win last night.com by the way have you seen the latest uh renderings from down there on on the construction how how are you liking the way things are looking yeah it looks good i actually was curious i checked in earlier this week with the unions because i was curious with all these frigid temperatures i mean I know they, oh, they well, that planned the for some of that, but, yeah. you know, you, you can't pour concrete when it's, you yep. know, negative infinity out. So Remember when they it, built the know. stadium, it was right up to it because there were some, some issues with the weather that caused delays, like, right up until, as a matter of fact, wasn't it not finished for the exhibition game? They actually had to still finish things before opening day? I think so. Yeah. So. But but per uh, per the Indians, they're they're on track and good to go. So I'm excited to see it. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it'll be something different than you know than anything else in baseball, and, and that's a nice little novelty. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I looked at the same thing you did, the the latest uh, renderings there and a couple of the, even the construction shots, even with all the snow around and stuff. I'm beginning to conceptualize what it's going to look like and going, hey, that's kind of a that's going to be kind of a unique thing there. You know, like you said, I can't think of uh, every, every all the good ballparks have that unique aspect, whether it's water fountains, whether it's the water behind the park, whether whatever unique 
uh, aspect of the way it's built in, and that kind of gives you a little bit of that down there uh, at Progressive Field. So looking forward to seeing it, and I'm curious if that uh, if that weather does, because we're supposed to have another cold blast here before things get back to normal. I think tomorrow uh, school's in jeopardy again, perhaps, if it drops down. What's up with that, teacher, man, Mike Brandenberry? What's up with the, uh, man, these temperatures definitely causing some havoc on snow days, and uh, is, your, uh, is your deal going to have to go into the summer? Have you passed up your number of days? We are over our days. We are... I, I don't know if we've we've let our clients in on the secret, but I think we'll be doing some online assignments and potentially our school year will be a little bit longer. But uh, I, I, that, for that reason, I jokingly have told kids this week, just forget about cold days. Those those days are over. I They're think done. Until, you know, till till we're about to like zero dark thirty, I think we're gonna be here. So you know, just bundle up, hats, mittens, you know, and until you see a polar bear walking down the street, I think school will be open here. But, last uh, night, but we'll see. Last night, getting the kids ready for bed, they're like, uh, they're like, hey, we, you know, school said we may not have school tomorrow or Friday. They they told us what we've got to work on all weekend. I said, let me tell you. I just looked. It's going to be like 10 degrees at 5 in the morning. That's right at the cutoff line. And I'm telling you that if it's right at the cutoff line, you're going to school. You guys have already missed way oh, too yeah. many days. And uh, we're already looking at graduating in July here this year. So I'm pretty sure you'll be going to school. Tomorrow's going to be the same way. But I figured I'd ask you about that. Mike Brandenberry from Did the Tribe Win Last Night.com. You guys working on You getting cooking with spring training on Did the Tribe Win Last Night? Yeah, we've got some uh, player profiles coming up this week. We're kind of transitioning from our, uh, I guess, you know, look at several prospects to, you know, some more guys who are probably competing for roster spots. Kind of, I think last week we talked about, you know, those guys maybe on the fringe of the roster, the the Zach Walters and the Tyler Holtz of the world, um, and, you know, what kind of role and impact those guys can have. So look for that on our site. Sounds good. Did the tribe win last night.com? Make sure you guys bookmark it. Mike, last question. Cavs, Warriors, who wins tonight? Can't wait. Is, you know, I we talk about momentum. There's there's momentum, there's self confidence, and then there's the Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> I, think, I think if you ask the Cavs to, to walk on water, um, part the sea, or anything like that, they can do it right now. I mean, they just. I mean, self-confidence, you know, to the nth degree. So I like the Cavs at home. I think this is a fun little stretch right here with the the Warriors and the Rockets and the Spurs. And if you're not a believer yet, um, you know, in them playing into June, I think they can they can convince the last non-believers here in about the next week. Oh yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to uh, seeing that. I like the way you put that too. And you know what? When your first when you said "can't wait," I saw. I can't lie. I saw Bart Scott with your voice coming out of his face. Can't wait. You don't know if you remember that video that went uh, viral a couple years ago where he was uh, going into the playoffs and they caught him on tape. Can't wait. And anyways, but I'm with you too. It's going to be fun, and not just that one, but these other Western Conference games. Next couple of weeks will really be a good. Uh, a good litmus test for the Cavaliers. Hey, by the time you and I talk again, the Indians will be playing actual games. I mean, almost actual games, but they'll be playing them. So we'll, we'll really be on the way to opening day at that point. Sounds good. Someone of little relevance in their season will have had a major impact and people will be talking about, you know, if this is the great surprise and have me on and we'll laugh about it together. You got it, man. Mike, have a good one, and we'll catch up with you next week. Sounds good, my man. All right. Mike Brandenberry from DidTheTribeWinLastNight.com. Make sure you bookmark that today, and make sure you answer question number eight in the Tribe Trivia Challenge. Who is the last Cleveland Indians player, the last Cleveland Indians player, to have made an all-star team during his career who spent his entire career from beginning to end playing for only one team, the Cleveland Indians. As you start looking, that cross-checking will get tough because you'll be like, oh, I forgot that guy also did this. Or, oh, wow, he did that. And uh, let me know, who was the last Cleveland Indian who made an all-star team who played strictly for the Indians throughout the entire course of his career? That's question number eight. Answer it. 
to the sports fix at AOL.com. Just email your answer to the sports fix at AOL.com. Question number eight. If you've missed any of the previous seven questions, all you have to do is go back and listen each day of the show on the archives, right on whatever site you're listening to right now. We've got archives of every show that's ever happened. Go back, answer the last questions because the total number of questions, right? Wins a 1972 Gaylord Perry jersey. Final question is coming up on Monday. Tuesday, we announce our winner. Ten questions, ten days. This is question number eight. Go back, answer any that you missed, and you can throw your name in the hat. Most number right wins a 1972 Cleveland Indians home white Gaylord Perry Cooperstown collectible jersey. Will that be you? I don't know. And what will be question number nine? Jonathan Knight, sports writer extraordinaire, in the house with that one tomorrow. Thanks to Mike Brandenberry from DidTheTribeWinLastNight.com. When we come back, final break of the day. We're going to set the stage for tonight. There's some hoops going on. NFL, some cuts going on. Some people coming in. The Browns talking to some people. We'll talk about that. Set the stage for a big Cavaliers clash tonight and more. Don't go anywhere. Final segment of the Sports Fix coming up next. Hey, I'll crack those phone lines, too, for the last few minutes. 216-539-7535. 216-539-7535. Don't go anywhere. Final segment of the Fix coming up next. There's something, I'll say there's something kind of yeah about a kid that's never played baseball. Throwing you the best sports commentary in town. The Sports Fix. Guys, want to take just a second as we head into this break and remind you about the official business printing source of the Sports Fix, our friends at Signs and Ship. Signs and Ship, I'm telling you, Chris and Pam, they've taken care of me since day one, and they can do the same for you. Whether you're a small business that's already been established and you're looking to grow to that next level and expand your business or perhaps you've got an idea that you just know is going to be a great business and you need to figure out how to brand it and how to promote it and put it out there signs and ship is the place for you if you need a logo they can create one for you they have a fantastic graphic designer business cards signs banners yard signs mobile advertising anything you can think of that you need to promote your business they've got it at signs and ship the best thing about them too is each of their locations whether it's the home base here in Elyria, Ohio that I work with, or their spots in Virginia, Florida, and Pennsylvania. It's all local sourced. Very important to me because we all understand that small business is the lifeblood of the community. So check them out, signsandship.com, or call Chris and Pam today, 440-323-6060, the home office in Elyria, Ohio. Signs and Ship, quality printing at affordable prices. Portions of the Sports Fix brought to you by Fantasy Jocks. Looking to upgrade your league trophy? Check out FantasyJocks.com for championship belts, rings, trophies, and more. Fantasy sports lovers, you put so much time, hard work, and effort into playing week to week that it quickly stops being a fantasy and And starts starts getting getting real. Real Real time spent making real decisions, creating real victory. I'm the greatest man in the world! And when the smoke clears, you want to show off those victories with a real prize. I mean, a really real prize. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, Nobody does, does that, that like, like Fantasy, Fantasy Jocks. Jocks. The crew over at Fantasy Jocks have beautiful, high-quality, and heavy-duty championship belts, rings, trophies, and so much more for all your fantasy sports needs. The trophy's 12 feet high, and it is glorious! Football, baseball, hoops, you name it, they have it. Plus, they have awesome draft kits and party supplies to make all your preseason activities the envy of everyone. If your league needs a ring, belt, or trophy, or you want to upgrade what you already have, there's literally only one place to go. If you're going to be a fantasy jock, do it right. It's mine. The most magnificent belt ever created. And it's mine. With America's fantasy sports superstore, fantasyjocks.com. Sports Fix listeners, like us on Facebook today. Facebook.com slash the Sports Fix. Hey, everybody. Listen up. Listen up, guys. Hey, guys. Listen Listen up. up. No one should ever hit a woman. Not their wife, not their girlfriend, not their date. No woman should have to fear violence, especially not from someone they know and trust. But that's the reality for too many women. We have to change it. 
It's up to each of us, because even one is too many. Violence against women hurts all of us. Growing up, I was ashamed and afraid of my father when he abused my mom. The worst abuse of power is when a man raises his hand to hurt a woman. We all have to take responsibility. So if you see someone threatening a woman, step up, speak out, and get help. Dating violence hurts all of us. So step up and help end it. Because one is too many. One is too many. One is too many. One is too many. End the violence. Because it's wrong. Because one, one is too many. Hey, Cleveland, this is Tristan Thompson of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and you're listening to Sports Fix. Welcome back to the Sports Fix Live across the Sports Fix Radio Network. J-Rock back here. We're wrapping things up, guys. Thanks for being with us. Thanks to Doug Plagans, the voice of the Lake Erie Monsters, for joining us earlier on in today's show. A couple of big ones for the Monsters coming up this weekend. Mike Brandenberry from DidTheTribeWinLastNight.com just joined us. And not only did we talk tribe for almost an hour, but we talked about the tribe trivia challenge and brought you question number eight. Which Cleveland Indian player, who was the last Cleveland Indian who made an all-star team? There have been more than one, but this was the latest Cleveland Indian who made an all-star game during his career, who played the entire length of his career strictly here for the Cleveland Indians. Email your answer to thesportsfix at AOL.com. That's question eight. You'll be in there. Most correct answers out of the ten questions is going to win. Of course, a tie will be decided by a random drawing. you got time to go back, answer the first seven, answer today's, and the next two. Next Tuesday, we're going to announce the winner. Is that you? Have you been entering? If not, shame on you. I mean, you know Indians history. You can win. A piece of Indians history. That 72 Gaylord Perry jersey. Going to look good on somebody come next Tuesday, guys. All right. Speaking of jerseys looking good on people, it's that time of year where you start putting jerseys on different football players as we're on the verge a few weeks away from free agency. Teams are beginning to clear guys out. I know uh, the uh, we talked yesterday. You know, you had Teddy Ginn out there who, by the way, word is that the Browns have reached out to him. I made my, you know, kind of made my case on that. Jacoby Jones, if we're going strictly a guy that's not going to help much in the past game, but he can kick return. Uh, Jacoby Jones has got more gas in the tank than Teddy Ginn, but Teddy Ginn's a hometown guy. I know that's going to play a part in it. Whitner, uh, the Ohio State thing. I get it. I know Glenville, all of that, but I was just throwing the thing out. Well, some more names out there. Another Buckeye, actually, A.J. Hawk, cut by the Packers. Had a couple of guys hit me up and say, hey, I'd like to see him, man, perhaps play for the Browns. I'm not gung-ho on A.J. Hawk at all. Uh, A.J. Hawk was the man. Injuries have slowed him down the last few years. There's a reason. It's not just financial that Green Bay parted ways with him. Yeah, I do think he may have a good season left in him at some point, but uh, the upside is not as big as the risk. And, you know, when guys lose the speed and explosiveness at that position that's needed, all of a sudden they become just another guy with a name. And I I worry that that's A.J. Hawk. I would pass if I were the Browns, but that guy is another name that some people are interested in. A.J. Hawk out there. Reggie Bush cut loose by the uh, Lions there. Guys beginning to get cut loose in advance of uh, free agency coming up here so guys' teams can get their salary cap room together and all of that. Uh, Speaking of the similar situation for the Browns, they only have a few days left. By Monday, they have to decide whether or not they're going to perhaps offer the franchise tag to Jordan Cameron, Um, whether he wants to negotiate a deal or not. The Browns have the option to take that away and just say, hey, we're going to franchise you. If they did, it would be one season that Cameron would be uh, would have no choice but to wait another season for free agency. It would be about eight and a half, almost nine million dollars, depending on the exact number that's set for the franchise tag at that position. Uh, some people estimate about eight point eight million, but uh, the Browns have to decide that's a big risk if you make that call. 
and then he's injured some more, as we've had, then you've got a lot of money tied up in a guy that's not helping you. His talent's not the question. It's the injury issues, you know. So you've got that. The Browns have a few days left to make that decision, or they've got to evaluate. Do you want to go after one of the free agent tight ends that out there? There's quite a bit. There's Owen Daniels. Uh, obviously, the big one is is Julius Thomas coming out of uh, Denver there, but I don't know how you get him other than – literally uh, really seriously overpaying for that and even then he may say no uh clay from the dolphins is expected to be out there the browns have a tight end in today james casey from the uh eagles but he hasn't done very well the last uh, couple of seasons and to me you've got better guys than that already barnage and dre are better than casey casey's just a guy just another guy um, you know, in the draft, there's options too. Jeff Herman, somebody that we've talked about uh, from Ohio State, got a lot of guys there. There's some really intriguing guys. Um, some people have. I matter of fact, I saw a mock draft the other day that had Max Williams. A lot of people are projecting that. I saw the Plain Dealer talking about that, but that's a guy uh, who's intriguing in the draft at tight end from Minnesota. Um, you've got uh, some people projecting uh, the kid from even from Michigan. I know it's a bad word, but he may project into a decent tight end prospect, whereas nowhere near as strong uh, Funches as a wide receiver prospect. But either way, the Browns have to make that decision in the next few days, which way they're going to go. Tomorrow, Jeff Gorman from Browns101.com, he'll be here. We'll talk about some of that stuff, some of these uh, some of these names that are out here. What do you do with Jordan Cameron? I I like Jordan Cameron. I like Jordan Cameron, the player. I don't like Jordan Cameron, the player who's not able to play for the Browns. And every year for the past three seasons, that's been an issue. And he could be a great playmaker, but if he's not able to make plays, then it doesn't help your team at all. But you know what? Knowing, knowing the luck that we've had lately, you let the guy go and he'll never get hurt again a day in his life. Although his injury issues aren't just physical, it's the head injuries and those those that's what scares me. If we were just talking about a guy that has shoulder issues or things like that, those are those are different types of ailments. When you're talking about the concussions, I mean everything could be rolling great and one bad fall, hit the back of your head, get hit helmet to helmet, and just like that, you know, you see a guy that may not be able to play for the whole second half of a season. That's the risky part. It's not even just the money, because I don't care about throwing Jimmy Haslam's money away. If he wants to pay a guy that can't play, that's his problem. But the Browns now have a spot not filled by a guy that they need to fill it. So talent-wise alone, that's the part that scares me. The availability. What do they say? Your best ability is your availability a lot of times. So that's a decision decision that the Browns have to make pretty quick, because if they're going to franchise Cameron, which is probably the only way you're going to keep him here, just because... He's already talked about entertaining free agency options elsewhere. Then you're going to have to franchise him, and they've got until Monday to do that. Oh, yeah, by the way, for those of you that listen to the Sports Fix, you've already known this because we've been talking about it for weeks, but now I saw some of those Browns blogs out there that that, uh, people like to uh, subscribe to. Some of them now, just now reporting that – the the front office has not interested with the exception of Mike Pettin with the uh with the reacquisition of Brian Hoyer. People were running with that story yesterday. I'm like, bro, if you listen to the listen to the fix, we've been talking about this for weeks, man. The writing is more than just on the wall, but we've heard that. And it, and basically some of the articles I saw yesterday just I was like, wow, maybe they were listening to us and then they wrote this cuz that sounds an awful lot like some of the things we've been talking about uh recently coming up here, but uh you know, say what you you want but these geniuses will sit here and and not want to interview brian hoyer while they bring josh mccown into town at that point yeah if you don't bring in brian hoyer and then you go trade for a legitimate uh, franchise or not even franchise just a, a an upper level quarterback i go yeah all right you upgraded you don't go psh, to hoyer and then go hey josh mccown that that's just foolishness that just means that you don't have the slightest clue you're just looking for somebody that's not named Hoyer at this point. And I honestly, from what my from what I hear, that actually is part of some people's <laughs> motivations is is his name not Hoyer? All right then, let's continue this conversation. So whatever. We'll talk about all of this with Jeff Gorman from Browns one oh one tomorrow. I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm talking about the uh, Cavaliers. Well, by the way, Buckeyes playing hoops tonight, too. Buckeyes, Nebraska here tonight, 7 p.m. tip-off. But the big one, the spotlight, 8 p.m. 
Cavs, Warriors. It is one of only two games tonight. You got OKC and Phoenix as the late game, and the Cavs and the Warriors are the f- uh, feature game tonight on the flagship station over there at TNT. Both teams are healthy, although Curry's a little bit hobbled. Still, he had the injury uh, to his ankle a couple of games ago, but he did come back in their last game. So you got Steph Curry, you got the Golden State Warriors, 44 and 10, best team in the league. Cavaliers remodeled, as we know, hottest team in the league right now. Are are they going to match up? I'm, I'm so intrigued to see this Cavs team, the way they've been playing defense, matched up with that offense over there because that's a uh, good luck stopping that. And it's good. That's what's so intriguing to me. This is the first of several uh, challenges over the next two weeks, especially those Western Conference teams, but uh, even a couple of the top East teams, too, where now we'll see. Uh, a real litmus test, a real measuring stick. And this doesn't mean anything as far as where the final journey and the destination goes, but this gives you a hint now on where you've got to work, what your weaknesses are going to be. And and this one, this one's intriguing because to a lot of people, including to the Vegas casinos, this is your NBA finals, according to all the odds makers at the All-Star break. Warriors and Cavs are your two best odds to make the finals as of a, a week ago at Bovada and some of the other um, sports books coming out of Vegas. So it's to a lot of people, this is a potential preview, especially with Derrick Rose going down. Uh, that that helps the Cavs' path clear up again over in the Eastern Conference. Not as much as some people think, though, because we were mentioning yesterday, they're a little experienced at playing without Derrick Rose. I mean, as experienced as you can get playing without your top guy. I'm not trying to minimize the loss of Rose, but when you play 200 games in three seasons without a guy, that means you've only played about 50 games with him, and at that point, you're you're used to it. You're able to bounce. So I don't expect it to be earth-shattering as far as it may affect them for a couple weeks because it's a, a, a punch to the gut, but they'll be able to settle down, you know, Obviously, they're still going to be affected talent-wise. but And you've got Atlanta. I mean, it's not like it was just Cleveland and Chicago, but that's one more domino that falls. So let's see how this matchup goes tonight. I'm very excited. The eyes of the basketball world will be on Cleveland tonight. Cavs going to make some dough as they open up the Navy jerseys for sale for the first time. You can get the whole roster and all the, uh, the hoodies and sweatshirts, all of the overpriced merchandise and licensed paraphernalia will be available for you to purchase tonight as they try to navy out the queue for this one against the Warriors. Remember, a little bit later than usual, too, because it's a national TV game, 8 p.m. tip-off for this one. Warriors and the Cavaliers tonight should be some good matchups. You've got Curry and and Kyrie, all the individual matchups in this one. You got Bogut, you got Kevin Love, you got the, you know, let's see how many more minutes Kendrick Perkins maybe gets out there now that he's got a practice and a game under his belt. See if he can get a few more out there. Are the Cavaliers... Hey, I want to see the difference, too. I mean, they see, it's very interesting when you look at the last time these teams played. You can't even make a comparison because LeBron wasn't there. The Cavs were just a completely different team at that point. And since then, <laughs> the Cavs have been red hot, hottest team in the league. And uh, we'll see how that matches up tonight. They've lost four in a row to the Golden State Warriors. Can the Cavaliers snap that tonight at the queue? We'll find out together and talk about it tomorrow live right here on The Fix. We'll have Jonathan Knight, sports writer extraordinaire in the house. Question 9 in the Tribe Trivia Challenge. Jeff Gorman from Browns101.com. And who knows where else we go. We'll look ahead to Cleveland State and Valpo and the clash to decide the Horizon League title. It's in Cleveland tomorrow. Big games, big basketball being played in Cleveland today and tomorrow. We'll talk about that and more. Guys, let's do it. Same bad time, same bad channel. Live at noon right here across the Sports Fix Radio Network. We love you, Cleveland and beyond. Enjoy the Cavs and the Buckeyes hoops tonight. And let's do it tomorrow, live at noon, right here on the Sports Fix. We love you, Cleveland and beyond, and we'll see you tomorrow right here when you get your fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah.